Okay, so we're looking at the first part of the normal distribution. Um, so this is applies to anything that can be measured, basically. So people's heights, foot size, whatever. Anything that can be measured, will uh, there'll be a spread of scores. And this spread of scores follows a similar shape regardless of what's being measured. And this shape is called the bell curve. Okay, so that's the sort of curve you might have seen before in some studies. And it's called the bell curve. So copy and come across. Okay, so what's happening with the bell curve is at the middle, the highest part is the average, and the average, the mode, and the median are all the same things in the bell curve. So the middle, the median, mode, most common, whatever, the is and the average are all at this value here. Okay, so that point there, um, when you read off, okay, there's a number, a frequency that you're measuring. And that will then that will give it to you the mode the most oh well that'll be the height like this is the highest point so that'll be the mode but the scores are distributed equally either side so the median so anything to the right is above average and anything to the left is below average and most measurements are going to be the biggest part of the measurement is always closest to the average okay come across when you're ready and so what we talk about is this thing called z scores and you've heard You've seen z-scores every time you've had your results in a, an assessment piece. So a z-score of 1 or a z-score of minus 1, okay, represents a standard deviation. Now, we're not going to calculate standard deviations um, at the moment, but um, a z-score of 1 means you're one, stand, one standard deviation ahead or one standard deviation below. And this part of the curve in this section here is the biggest part of the curve and 68% of the scores will lie between plus and minus one. That's where most kids sit, okay? So copy and come across. Um, when you have plus or minus two, you have 95%, and when you have plus or minus three, you have 99.7%. So most of the scores, it'd be very rare to get above or below minus plus or minus three, okay? So copy that and come across when you're ready. So what we can do is we can actually break it up into sections. So we know that this area is 68%, so I can split it up into 234s. Okay, and then to get the next section, uh, 95 minus 68 equals 27, so that means there's 13 and a half there and 13 and a half there, and then 99.7 minus 95 equals 4.7, so they've got 2.35 and 2.35, and then I've only got 0.3% split, and so I've got 0.15 and 0.15. And when you add up all these numbers, you get 100%. Okay, so copy that because that's going to be useful when you do these questions. Okay, so what we've got. So we've got the average in a maths test was 70 with a standard deviation 10. You didn't have to calculate it, you were told it. Uh, above approximately what percentage of scores are above 70, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so let's have a look. So we put the average as 70 and then we go plus 10 is 80, plus 10 is 90, plus 10 is 100. So that's your plus 1, your plus 2, your plus 3. And then your minus 1, your minus 2, minus 3, minus, minus 1 lot. Okay, so what's the score above 70? Well, that's the average, so it's going to be 50%. Uh, what scores between 60 and 70? So it's going to be 30, or it's actually 34%, not 34 I made a mistake there. Uh, less than less than 90. So going backwards, the only scores you don't count are those two, which adds up to 2.5, so it's 97.5. And more than 50 is going forward, so you're not counting those two numbers, so it's again 97.5. Okay? So all these questions early on, I only ever have plus, wh plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, minus 1, minus 2. In the next video, we'll be talking about numbers that fall in between, like plus 1.1 deviations. Okay, so in this particular question, again, I, I won't be typically asking a question uh, from the diagram, calculate the mean and standard deviation. So there's the part of the curve, it's right in the middle, so the mean is 10, and then plus plus 1, that's plus 2, plus 3, um, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So six deviations lie between, so we've got 32 minus 8 equals 24. So therefore, one standard deviation equals four, which makes sense, 20 to 24, 28, 32. <coughs> See how, that's how it works, but again, I don't think I'll be asking questions like that. 
Um, so in this first type of practice, in this type of practice, all questions revolve around standard deviations that are whole numbers, and later on we'll fill in the gaps. So if you have a look at uh, the textbook, MathQuest 12, don't do all the questions, but just do a variety of them. Okay, that's it.